I am here in Newhound, Copenhagen, the city where I live. And I'm tired. Luckily, today is my first day of holiday. I'm traveling to South Africa tonight. So, what better way to start my holiday than contemplate the effects of altitude on pressure gauge readings? Here I have two identical pressure gauges. And as we know, pressure gauges indicate the pressure of something relative to atmospheric pressure. What happens when we take a pressure gauge which reads zero at sea level, because basically all of Denmark is at sea level, and we take it to a high elevation. I'm going to Johannesburg, which is roughly 1.5 kilometers in elevation. Actually, it's 1.75. And the expected pressure there is 85 kilopascals absolute. Actually, it's about 82. As opposed to the 100 kilopascals I'm experiencing right now. We've got two gauges, one that is sealed, one that is open. Let's see what happens. So I made it here to Johannesburg and things didn't go exactly as expected. I'm going to take you through all of it. As I said, the atmospheric pressure in Johannesburg is expected to be around 82 kilopascals. I want to show you something. If you look at a weather app on your phone for your specific location, this says that Johannesburg pressure is 102 and a half kilopascals right now, which is even more than the pressure expected in Copenhagen. If you look at a weather app or any sort of meteorological data, the pressure reported is always adjusted to sea level. So if Johannesburg, which is 1.75 kilometers above sea level, was at sea level, the pressure would be 102 kilopascals. The actual pressure is likely then 83 kilopascals at the moment. If you live in a place with a high altitude, go and look at what your say weather app says the atmospheric pressure is and check it will always be around 100 kilopascals because that's what it is at sea level not the actual surface pressure you see on the ground let's start with the regular pressure gauge that i didn't cap so this was always open to atmosphere as you can see absolutely nothing happened it's still reading zero and this was totally expected to understand this i'm going to take this gauge apart and show you what's going on inside to understand why i didn't expect this to move the gauge has two screws one on each side to take the cover the faceplate off and then it's got two screws on the back to hold the internal mechanism attached to this back cover plate. And we're going to take those off. Here is what's known as the dial. This is just a thin piece of cardboard or aluminium or something with the numbers written on it. This is the pointer, which rests against a stop. And this red part, you can set yourself to whatever your high pressure limit on your process is. So I can move it around to warn my operator that, okay, this is too high. What's going on at the back is I have a sealed copper tube. It's not always copper. It's obviously dependent on your application, but this is quite a cheap one. This tube is sealed all the way around except for the opening at the bottom which is attaching to your process. This tube is known as a Borden gauge. There are external forces, namely atmospheric pressure acting on the outside of the tube and there are internal forces which are the forces exerted by virtue of the fluid pressure. As the pressure inside build up it pushes against this side of the tube and it causes it to extend. As it extends, it moves these linkages, which, if you look on the other side, move the pointer. The reason I expect the uncapped pressure gauge to still be reading zero as altitude changes is because in Copenhagen, the forces were balanced internally and externally at 100 kilopascals, and in Johannesburg, those forces are balanced internally and externally at a completely different pressure. Because internal and external pressures are equal, I do not expect the Borden tube to deform. And so I do not expect the pointer to move from zero. So even when the gauge is completely assembled, you can see that it, this 
casing isn't actually tight. I've got a gap here between the threaded part and the casing itself, so I can always get whatever the atmospheric pressure is into the gauge and surrounding the mechanism. Now let's look at the gauge with the cap screwed on. Now I'm gonna tell you that I've already removed the cap because, well, this is something that I did not expect. When I arrived, this gauge, just like my uncapped gauge was reading zero. What I was expecting is that I was trapping 101 kilopascals of Copenhagen air inside the Borden tube, sealing it, taking it and transporting it to Johannesburg and allowing that 82 kilopascals to surround the Borden tube with 100 inside, meaning inside the tube would be higher it would deform and I would read the difference between Johannesburg and Copenhagen. So 101 minus 82 or 83, I was expecting this to read 19 kilopascals. It didn't. I suspect it is because I didn't seal it properly and I was allowing that Copenhagen air, that higher pressure to escape. If you look at what I did, I put silicon around the outside of the cap. You may ask why the hell did I do that? Well, I wanna show you something. My initial plan, was to simply take PTFE plumber's tape, which is typically used on screw fittings, and seal it without any sort of silicon. So this is what I did initially, and I took it, I screwed it on, and observe what happened. I'm not gonna go all the way, but you can see by sticking PTFE tape on the thread and then compressing the cap over it, I'm not allowing any of the air to escape. And what I was actually doing is compressing the gas. In fact, I wasn't looking at the dial while I was tightening back in Copenhagen, and I actually got the dial to go completely over range and touch up against the other side of this rest. A pressure gauge does not like to be overextended past its measurable range measurable range because what happens is you end up deforming the tube to avoid this I took off the PTFE tape screwed it on by hand because the clearance between the threads wasn't completely tight the air escaped and I didn't compress to get a reading then I put silicon over the gap to try and seal it so usually if you've overranged a gauge you can't be a hundred percent certain that it reads accurately so I think a combination of overranging the gauge as well as not sealing it properly is the reason the gauge didn't move. As I said, I was expecting this to read the difference between Copenhagen and Johannesburg simply because I've supposedly trapped the air inside. Now here is something I didn't show you. These gauges, these cheap gauges that I used, these are positive pressure gauges. They measure from zero to one bar. I did exactly the same thing except I used much better vacuum gauges. So I've also got an unsealed and a sealed vacuum gauge also reading from zero to minus one bar. Minus one bar is practically full vacuum. You don't get lower than that. These are actually much higher quality gauges compared to the other ones, the overpressure ones I was using over there. Let's start with the open one. You can see that I'm measuring an ever so slight vacuum of about minus four kilopascals. I was looking at this yesterday and it was minus eight kilopascals. And when I arrived, I think it was about minus 15. It actually read what I was expecting as I arrived. Let's use what we learned from the positive pressure gauge on here. But before we do that, I want you to notice something. This gauge is liquid filled. It's usually some sort of silicon oil that's used to lubricate the internals so that you protect them from vibrations so that they don't wear and that extends the life of a gauge. So that's particularly helpful if your gauge is sitting on a pipeline that's constantly vibrating, say on the discharge of a piece of rotating equipment. Because the gauge is liquid filled, the manufacturer has to seal the casing of the pressure gauge so that that liquid doesn't completely come out. This wasn't a necessity in the overpressure gauge where I've got air gaps all around this thing. Because the casing is sealed, what I can expect is that I still have my Copenhagen air inside, 100 kilopascals, while I'm measuring the outside pressure over here, which is lower. That is why I'm registering a vacuum. However, that's a lie. While I may have had this gauge in Copenhagen, I ordered it online. I didn't buy it there. I have no idea where this gauge was manufactured. It could have been manufactured and shipped from anywhere in the world and the manufacturer will have locked their air pressure inside the gauge casing. 
Now, obviously, you can't install a gauge and be dependent on where the gauge was manufactured to have an accurate reading, which is why these gauges contain a vent and a plug at the top here. This black plug can be removed in order to refill the gauge if it ever needs liquid inside. But this means that I need to seal the oil inside, but if I completely enclose this casing, then not only have I trapped the air of wherever this gauge was manufactured, if this gauge is sitting in the sun and starts heating, I'm going to heat the gas inside, which will also cause it to expand and contract, changing the internal casing pressure, which will also affect the accuracy of my reading. For that reason, I've got this orange valve. The valve has an open position and a closed position. It is a vent to allow the casing pressure internally to equalize with whatever my external pressure is. During normal operation, this tab should be in the open position in order to accurately read what your pipeline pressure is. For that reason, it should also be installed in the upright vertical position so that you don't end up leaking liquid all over the place. The reason the plug has a closed position in the first place is, well, exactly for this reason over here. When it's not installed, I can turn it upside down. So when I'm transporting or storing the valve, I can close it. So I have not opened this since I've purchased this gauge, meaning the internal pressure is whatever the pressure was where this gauge, wherever this gauge was manufactured. I expect to open the tab and then for the reading to go to zero because once again, the forces around my Borden tube, external and internal, will equalize. Let's see if it happens. It's worth mentioning that these vent plugs are only a feature on gauges with extremely small ranges. I'm talking about in the range of a couple of bar, maybe. I don't actually know what the manufacturers do. Call it two, three, four bar. I don't know. And that's because this CL 1.6, that is an accuracy class. That is how accurate this gauge is, a, is supposed to be according to the manufacturing standard. If the gauge range is really low, then a change in atmospheric pressure will cause the error to be much more than the error class of this gauge. But even for the same error class, if I have a gauge that measures 100 bar, then it doesn't really matter if the atmospheric pressure changes 10 kPa. Then you won't see a vent plug like this. Go and look around your plant to see whether you've got gauges installed like this. Check whether they've got a cap on top and see whether this is in the open position. If it's closed, you might, be having an, you might have an inaccurate pressure gauge reading. I also took a similar gauge and as I did with my, with my overpressure gauge, screwed a cap on and once again installed silicon around the threaded part. This is reading similar around minus five kilopascals. What I was expecting to happen is for me to trap Copenhagen air in the casing, Copenhagen air inside the tube, and for this reading not to move. But, upon, but it did move. It did go to some sort of negative pressure. The other thing to note is that if I have this sort of setup, the volumes of air are so small that I've trapped, trapped inside that they are extremely sensitive to temperature. Here you can see I took this exact gauge before opening the silicon last night. I put it in a fridge and I got the reading to be zero. I transferred the gauge into hot water and you can see that after spending some time in hot water, the pressure reading goes down to minus 20 kilopascals. So this setup is completely temperature dependent and I wasn't expecting it to be that sensitive. So I can't really conclude anything about here. So that's the answer. Does altitude affect pressure gauge readings? Sometimes yes and sometimes no. If the gauge is a cheap gauge like this and it's not sealed, then no, because I can have the same pressure internally and externally after I've transported the gauge. If you've got a really good gauge, especially the ones that are liquid filled and they're sealed, then it will affect the pressure reading if I do not open the vent valve in the top. So by design, pressure gauges should not be affected by altitude.